on guys, it's K-Dub here with another episode of Crypto Zombie. So it's Friday, it's the weekend, we made it. Congratulations, it's nice to see you guys back on the channel today. If we have a look at what is going on, another beautiful green day. I'll take it. Now, I do wanna just say something before we get on. I do feel like I have a little bit of a responsibility to report this to you. So if you did order the Ledger Nano X, I've been wondering why the heck I haven't received it yet. Well, they just sent this out to everybody and basically they say due to unexpected production issues, they're going to be pushed back a month. I know, this sucks, right? So they said the reason for this is that the parts that they had received were not up to the quality of their standard. So basically they had to send them back and unfortunately that's the case. Now, here's the cool thing though. What they are doing right here is they said they do wanna make things right so they want to offer a free Ledger Nano S to anyone who pre-ordered the Nano X before the announcement. So anyone that did use my referral link, if you did buy a Ledger Nano X, it sucks that we have a month to wait for it, but they're gonna give you an extra Ledger Nano S with it. So that's pretty cool. And honestly, let's be realistic. Do you want them shipping out something that is not up to their, you know, full, like satisfactory, you know? And I, I wouldn't wanna be using some, oh yeah, you know, the, the, the parts will do, right? So that's basically that news, guys. Take it how you will, but you know, I am giving away Ledger Nano S's on the channel, so all you gotta do is just drop a comment, and you guys know every Monday I give away a Ledger. So that's kinda like the mandatory information. Now getting to the charts, beautiful green day, market cap 140, Bitcoin is barely moving yet again. Where's the money going? That's right, guys, altcoins. So we are seeing the gains in the altcoins yet again. We have 24-hour volume of 32 billion, which is really, really nice to see. Bitcoin dominance, 50.7%. It's even lower than it was before when Bitcoin had that spike. In fact, look, if we just go here, we'll just look at, uh, just look at one day. Well, probably one day you really won't be able to see it, but maybe you will. Yeah, one day is horrible. Um, yeah, you can't really tell on this chart, but it definitely fell since yesterday, guys. So having a look at what is going on, Tezos up 18%, Knowles 18%, Maximine 12%, Digibyte 12%, Cardano 12%, Bitem, Ravencoin, Iota, Ontology, Project Pi, Ethereum Classic, VeChain, Theta, the list goes on, guys. So it is another great day for the altcoins in the market. Having a look at Bitcoin, uh, well, we are still on track. We haven't been able to fall below this kind of channel that we're in. We tried, we tested it, then we pretty much hit it exactly and pulled back up. So currently, as you can see, we're still not above the $4,000, not on Coinbase, which is you know what a lot of us in the US tend to use, especially if you're a new person and you're just coming into crypto, right? So um, currently, it looks bullish, but I don't wanna say that because it's the weekend and we do have those weekend dips, but I'm not really seeing anything that looks like we're gonna have another massive plummet. The only thing I do wanna point out though is that we are getting closer to sort of closing out this sort of wedge right here. And as we do, you know, get tighter and tighter, you could see massive moves if the volume gets very low at that point. And in that case, then yes, we could see a potential sell-off. And like I said, we've been holding support at 39.42. So, I mean, until we break lower than it, there's no reason for me to assume that we that we will, okay? But, you know, this is crypto. Anything can change. Literally, I could put this video out. A news article comes out, forget it, right? So having a look at where we are right now, we are getting closer to not only the smaller wedge that we were looking at, but also this gigantic wedge that we've been forming as well. We have had multiple points of contact, so that's good, right? Three confirms it. So as we can see right here, you know, probably within the next couple of days, I mean, we're gonna have probably a pretty serious move. Um, so just keep your eyes on that. I hope that we don't go below this 200 week moving average. Um, so, you know, like I said, currently that fair value would be 3,398. So that would be like worst case scenario. Uh, best case scenario is we finally break out of the wedge and above this neckline that we originally had when we were looking at our kind of sort of ugly looking uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, head and shoulders pattern, right? But if we do, then, you know, we could see a 4,200, maybe even $4,300 Bitcoin if it does break out. So those are the two scenarios I present you with. I'm not going to make any calls on this today because I don't really know. I know that's not what you want to hear. You don't want to hear that from me. But um, right now I'm just chilling. I mean, listen, guys, I mean, anyone in here, you know, with the exception, you know, if you bought pretty much 
anything that wasn't these tops, you're up. So if you've been buying Bitcoin pretty much any time since December, uh, yeah, you know, December 17th, you're pretty much up <laughs> for the most part. So yeah, that's good news. And also the other thing I wanted to point out is the fee, uh, fear and greed index indicator has actually pulled back a little bit. It was at 62 yesterday, which is a lot higher. Uh, obviously 69 is when we had that massive crash. Well, there you go, 56. So that's looking better as well. But I know, let's look at the negative side of things, right? I'm too positive on this channel. That's what people tell me. All right, well, guys, I've been in a bear market for, I mean, we have been in a bear market for you know over a year and a few months now. I'm tired of being negative, <laughs> just to be honest with you. But I know we have to be realistic. So you have a technical analyst. He goes by the name of Bleeding Crypto. And he said that Bitcoin could retest the $2,450 um, and maybe go as low as the $1,850 mark. Now, you can see in the charts as they point, the volume is increasing. So this is a good thing. But he says, I believe uh, that it could go this low because if you look at the chart of May of 2017, we maintained support at the $2,450 region for months before we dip to the 1850 and that marked the end of the Bitcoin cash fork bearish trend. We shot up from there and we never came back and really retested that area. So he does think that's possible, but personally, with what I'm seeing right now, with all of these uh, massive gains in these altcoins, I mean, let's go to the next page, right? And let's see what we got here. 33% safe, NKN, 16%, uh, Grestel coin, 15%. Smartlands, Buybox, Cortex. I mean, everything is up. We'll go to the next page and check it out, okay? What else we got here? Numeri. I mean, look at these. The key is up. Phantom is up again today. Um, just, yeah. A lot of, I mean, so I, I think it's different this time. I think with all of these altcoins sort of popping off, I don't really feel that we're dealing with the same thing that we were dealing back then. I mean, you can even look. For example, this came out from, uh, you know, Cryptox Hunter, and he was talking about the mirror image. Now, we spoke about this before, how basically what Bitcoin is doing right now, if you flip it, it's the complete opposite of what it was doing before the major drop. So literally everything that was happening here is mirroring itself down here. So it's almost like begging the question, is this whole thing just like an upside down Bart Simpson pattern and we're just gonna shoot up, you know? I mean, probably not, but hey, if we can come down that fast, what's preventing us from going up that fast? You know what I'm saying? Also, this is a uh, second, uh, well, also, well, not second, but technically this guy put it out first, but Moon Overlord, you know, he had put this out. We talked about this and he was talking about Bitcoin mirror world, right? So it still has been following this and this came out on March 13th. So I just wanted to point that out. Now, here's some other pretty interesting things to note about the positivity in the space, the fundamentals, right? Not a lot to go on the price action today, but definitely got some crazy good news. So you have intercontinental exchanges to be launched trading platform backed, which keeps getting pushed back, but they have earned a 740 million valuation after it raised over 180 million in funding last year. So obviously they haven't launched yet, but they're saying that they could increase its valuation even further should it raise further funds. Now you're probably saying to yourself, this thing's not even out yet, right? Well, this is pretty incredible considering how much it's already raised for just the simple anticipation of what they're gonna be launching. They don't even have customers yet, you know? I mean, maybe they have some that are lined up, but they don't have any official yet, right? So. So, you know, you have to look at that. They say at the same time, sources uh, said questions among investors remained about their risk return. Okay, that's understandable. They say from a cash flow perspective, backed will not be earning much based on the proposed contract fees. So a lot of things will need to line up for investors to receive returns that they would typically expect for a series A, right? But nevertheless, according to Commissioner Dan Berkowitz, there appears to be a strong will among lawmakers to ensure BAC's first product physically delivered Bitcoin futures, right? So you're seeing this excitement. You're seeing these people get behind it. You're seeing them raising money for something that doesn't even exist yet. So the anticipation is definitely building. One thing also we could talk about is this is sort of, uh, you know, CZ the other day, he was like, everyone will be using crypto. JPM will ultimately have to use crypto, right? So this article from Crypto Globe goes on to say that although widespread adoption of crypto has not yet happened, partly due to price volatility, partly due to the need for improvements for the underlying technologies, such as
as efficient blockchains that can handle Visa or MasterCard scale transaction throughput, which there are plenty working on that on the time and partly due to regulatory obstacles, but it looks like crypto is growing and adoption is growing day by day. And they go on to talk about Switzerland's largest online retailer accepting cryptos, Winklevoss twins, uh, you know, stable coins coming out, Facebook launching its own potential cryptocurrency. Um, you know, maybe, you know, maybe Apple and Google might be on track. We don't know. Samsung, you know, what happened with their startup with the engine safe storage of private keys on, on the Galaxy S10, right? And I want to point to something else that isn't just, oh, like, you know, adoption as in like wallets and, 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 you know, um, you know, banks and, and institutions, right? Well, Bitmain plans to set up 200,000 crypto mining machines in China. Why? If things are so terrible, right? Clearly, we saw what was happening with the miners. They were turning, they were turning their, their, they were just shutting their farms down, essentially, right? And now you're seeing Bitmain setting up 200,000 crypto mining machines in China. So this is a source familiar with them. And they told CoinDesk uh, that Bitmain is going to install these units um, to take advantage of cheap hydroelectric power costs during the summer following the excessive rains in southwestern China. Actually, we spoke about this before. So here's the thing. The mining equipment is estimated at around $80 million to $100 million. So you really think these guys are going to dish out another $80 million to $100 million in more mining equipment if they really thought there wasn't a future for this? So that's just something else you got to point out. And also, I want to keep you guys interested. I know I caught your attention with this one. So this is from Rolling Stone, and it talks about cam girls, right, and how they're moving over to cryptocurrency as well. Now, I know you might say to yourself, like, okay, how's this adoption? Well, guys, what did the porn industry do for the internet? I mean, think about it, right? It, it did have something to do with it. Um, so, you know, they talk about a lot of payment uh, – Credit cards and payment platforms won't process payment for adult services, including live stream erotic content, etc. So they were talking to this girl, Gabby, right? And she went on to say, you know, the longer you spend online without making any money, the longer your rankings drop. She said this puts you in a position where sometimes you have to work for free. And then every hour you spend online not getting tipped, you get lower and lower rankings. So I don't really know how these things work, but apparently, you know, from the source, that's what she says. So you know, also you have adult performer Janice Griffin wrote back in 2017 that, you know, blockchain projects like Spank Chain and things like that can actually help them leaving models with more power over their careers and options and how they want to build their legacies, as she puts it. Control over your career trajectory, trajectory is the ultimate power. So, you know, obviously some of these... Uh, you know, some of these guys, they, they kind of like say what you can and can't do and they're very specific and obviously they lower your rate, your ratings if you don't get enough money, et cetera, et cetera. So now they're saying with these crypto opportunities, you can basically accept whatever you want. So we have the cam girls, we have the miners, we have uh, CZ, we have intercontinental exchange, right? And, and, and backed and them raising money. So, I mean, this is just a lot of a lot of different sectors all focusing on the same thing, right? Now, here's the FUD of the day. Are you guys ready? You guys ready for some FUD? Okay. Well, illegal, as you can see right here. So China, which at this point, you know, whatever, but China says ICOs and STOs are solicited illegal financial activities. Involvement in such activities will be severely punished as of uh, yesterday, <laughs> apparently. So, yeah, so China is just clamping down even harder. I mean, they've already, you know, banned the exchanges and now they're saying ICOs and STOs and stable currencies as well. So this is incredible. So the notice taken aim at social media platforms and research groups that exploit these particular crypto niches with the aim of issuing money for money. Now, is this something you should be worried about? Well, I remember there was a time where, you know, any type of FUD article that would come out, like, instantly would crash the price, and, like, lately it's kind of just like, yeah, whatever, man, right? story short, they basically say the value of trading speculation has been lucrative using the names of research and forum to promote ICO, IEO, STO, stable currency, integral currency, digital currency, 
guys, cryptos, just cryptos in general, okay? So basically, they're saying such activities are not really based on blockchain, but take the opportunity to speculate on the concept of blockchain. The notice emphasizes that financial activities must be included in the scope of national supervision and deems security tokens an illegal activity. So my personal opinion on this is, I don't really think it's going to affect the markets that much. I think that China has done enough damage in the past with their FUD that's come out. And yeah, you're just not really seeing the news affect things the way that it used to. So that's basically what's going on. I'm not concerned about it. Uh, the markets don't seem to be concerned about it. Uh, oh no, Bitcoin's down 0.8%. Oh no, what's going on, guys? What's going on? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. The altcoins are playing. That's what's happening. But yeah, so that's that situation. You guys can have a look at that as well um, if you think that's of concern. Another thing that a lot of people are worried about is you know on March 20th, you had the Mt. Gox trustee known as the Tokyo Whale, uh, Kobayashi. He announced that Mt. Gox is finally moving toward settling creditors' accounts in cryptocurrency or cash. So another thing, should you be worried about this? Well, to be completely honest at this point, I would rather just get this thing over with personally. So if they give the money uh, you know, in the form of cryptocurrency and these investors are just like, I'm done with this, I'm fed up, I'm dumping it on the exchanges, let them dump it. Let them get it out of their system so we can just move on from this. I'm okay with taking a 10% hit, whatever, on the daily if we could just get this situation out of the way and just move on with our lives. So that's my take on that before we move forward. Kind of funny right here, just some funny sort of stuff. So apparently Eric Voorhees tried to order some pizzas using the Lightning Network. He said he tried to order 18 pizzas for lunch via Bitcoin Lightning Network using LN Pizza, and max apparently is two pizzas. Perhaps we should measure layer two scaling in pepperonis per second, PPS. So they actually, then they responded and said, max order is 30. There must have been some sort of an issue. And then they go upon for further inspection, 34 pizzas were ordered, which exceeded our internal maximum order again, or let us know where you'd like them delivered and we'll take care of it. He goes, hmm, we didn't order 34 pizzas. We tried to order 20 pizzas and it didn't work. We've since ordered 18 through regular Domino's. And then they go and say, the story keeps shape-shifting? <laughs> Get it? Because, you know, he's the founder of Shapeshift. Okay, so it's pretty funny. It's pretty funny. Um, it's no problem. We'll scale the pizzas on plate. This is by design as core. We'll argue that having the ability to have more than two pizzas will centralize your company even further and that everyone should be able to run a meeting. You gotta love crypto, man. It's like, we're like the most like, <laughs> it's like such a ragtag bunch. I mean, like, there's so much like, uh, it's, there's so much price involved in crypto, but there's also like such a meme culture and so many jokes and it definitely, you know, makes it a pleasure to be involved in the space for sure. So I want to get into some quick coin news real quick. We have ERC 1155 support is almost here. Soon NGINX users will be able to easily search, browse and verify next generation ERC 1155 assets and transactions completing the ecosystem of support needed for widespread adoption of these powerful Ethereum assets. As you guys know, huge engine fan, not even just because they pumped. I've always been a fan of, you know, digital assets, collectibles, non-fungibles, gaming, skins, uh, anything like that. I think it's really probably one of the most immediate use cases for blockchain uh, right away. So that's good news as well. Oh yeah, we have this also. We have Jared Rice Sr., founder of Crypto Bank, uh, Bank Arise Bank, pleaded guilty to one count of securities fraud Wednesday in federal court. The Dallas News reported Thursday that Rice, who was arrested last year, admitted to scamming investors out of $4.2 million by selling Arise coin tokens and promising that customers would receive Visa credit cards and accounts insured by the federal, uh, the FDIC. Another one. Also, we have Mercury FX, which uses Ripple's X Rapid, is currently processing 1.8 billion worldwide. They say we're steaming ahead, to be honest, and we're looking for more jurisdictions and more flow to the jurisdictions we've already opened up. We're working very closely with Mexico and the Philippines on opening up new channels. We're very keen to move very fast, but it's difficult when you're building out a new network. But it is nice to see progress being made. Now, we also have CoinMarketCap announcing uh, the launch of cryptocurrency benchmark indices on NASDAQ, Bloomberg, Thomas Reuters. You could read all this right here. Basically, the indices will be calculated and administrated by the German index provider Selective. 
And they will cover the top 200 cryptocurrencies by market cap. They'll have one, the CMC Crypto 200, which will include Bitcoin. And then they'll have one, the CMC 200X, which will not include Bitcoin. So that's basically what they're doing. Now, we also have blockchain being used for biometric tracking, uh, which um, who is this for exactly? Oh, they're just saying it could be for travel. Right. So basically, if you're you know at customs and it's obviously a pain, they're saying that we could maybe speed up the process and make it more efficient if we use blockchain. So they go on to say that one area where we've seen a significant amount of success is in facial comparison and biometric data. There is a service we've created to verify who an individual boarding an aircraft as they're seeking admission into the United States, right? So they basically tell you who they are. If we could have more data for the verification from another government party, that would be really great for us. So obviously we do have this situation with data silos. A lot of projects are solving this, you know, getting these projects interoperable with each other, right? One of the reasons why you guys know I'm a huge fan of things like quant network, basically anything that just makes it easier to connect two parties together, right? But also they do point out that blockchain is a great use case for this. So they obviously say a significant hurdle still needs to be overcome for the tech to gain traction and provide maximum use value, the development of standardized procedures for communication between multiple organizations, blockchain systems. And finally, UPS, you might be familiar with them. They deliver your packages. <laughs> so they're looking to integrate blockchain platform to improve merchant supply chain. Another great use case, right? So this new uh, blockchain platform is going to be dubbed Inception Zippy, and it's designed to help companies list, market, and distribute their products to customers. So purportedly, it will enable the merchants to monitor the entire supply chain from product listing to delivery, ensuring the sensitive data like contract specific pricing and rates are only accessible to the buyer and the seller. And if that's not enough, before we go, guys, I just want to let you know it's official. We've been visited from the future. We have a time traveler, and he wants to let us know the top 10 of uh, <laughs> Coin Market Cap 2029. Number one, Bitcoin. Number two, Ethereum. Number three, RSK. Number four, new project to be released in 2026. Number five, Litecoin. Number six, Nano. Number seven, new project to be released in 2028. Number eight is Stablecoin DAI. Number nine is apparently Brad. BAT. So I don't know what that means. Is that basic attention or what, what is that? Brave browser. It's Brad. And then we have Dogecoin. So you can read this. It's just a joke. He's just having fun. But uh, yeah, so there you go, guys. We've been visited from the future. So that's it for me today, guys. It is Friday. It is the weekend. We made it. Congratulations. But guess what? I did not forget about the t-shirt giveaway. Obviously, we have to give away a shirt from yesterday. So we will go to this video. We will copy and we will paste this into the random comment generator. So, drum roll please. Oh wait, not yet, not yet, hold on. 425 unique comments. Okay, drum roll please. Not the longest bear market and I want the shirt, bro. LOL, Nathaniel King, you totally won the shirt. Thank you so much, so you know what to do. All you gotta do is go back, hit me up in the official about section and send me an email and you will get that shirt. So before we go, <clears throat> thank you so much to everyone who's been liking, subscribing and commenting and also, I appreciate all the Brave Browser tips that you guys have been sending. It definitely supports the channel. If you haven't tried the Brave Browser yet, you guys know it's $5 you get when you download it if you use my link. And you also can get paid to watch ads, which is pretty cool. And guys, sorry about the Ledger Nano X thing, but understand that they are trying to be safe here. They don't want to ship out a product that's not up to their standards. So yeah, but you know, if you guys do want to, you know, still order a Ledger Nano S, you can. I mean, that's literally what I use. It's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, but that's basically what's going on with that. So that's it for me today, guys. Thank you so much for coming back to the channel. It's officially the weekend. I'm excited. Let's have one more look at the chart. Let's see what we're doing. Yeah, oh, it looks good so far. Looks good so far, but don't hold me to it. You never know what happens when the video goes out, right? So appreciate it. You're the reason I do this every single day. Make sure to hit that bell notification so you guys get updated right away. Um, I know some people said the bell notification got turned off for some reason. I don't know why that is. I know YouTube's been doing a lot of upgrades. That's it. I'm rambling. We've kept this video quite short today. We are at 24 minutes. I think we can end it here. Thank you so much. You guys rock. My name is K-Dub. This is Crypto Zombie. Until next time, stay crypto and peace out.